Thank you for the opportunity to present on the multidisciplinary care model for advanced prostate cancer, the rationale for building your team. I'm Dr. Kelvin Moses from Vanderbilt University Medical Center. I have no relevant disclosures. So today our objectives are to understand the guidelines for advanced prostate cancer in multiple states, including biochemical recurrence, metastatic hormone sensitive prostate cancer, non-metastatic castrate resistant prostate cancer or CRPC and metastatic CRPC. We'll discuss briefly the various treatments for each of these states and then develop a framework for the multidisciplinary care of these patients based on the AUA SUO guidelines. As we all know, the natural progression of prostate cancer for most men starts with treatment for localized disease. A significant proportion of men will ex experience recurrence and or castrate sensitive metastatic disease, which will require androgen deprivation therapy. And many of these men will then progress to a castrate resistant state in advanced disease, which requires multiple different therapies. As listed at the outset, there are various clinical states of advanced prostate cancer, uh, biochemical recurrence, metastatic disease, either hormone sensitive or castration resistant, uh, and metastatic disease. But recently, the AUA, ASTRO, and SUO came up with the treatment algorithm for advanced prostate cancer. For men with biochemical recurrence without metastatic disease, the main idea here is that we should not routinely initiate androgen deprivation therapy. And for those who start androgen deprivation, intermittent is ideal uh, compared to continuous disease in the absence of metastasis. Clinicians should use PSMA PET scan uh, where available in patients with PSA recurrence after failure of local therapy as opposed to conventional imaging. For metastatic hormone sensitive prostate cancer, again, you should assess the extent of disease using conventional imaging uh, or PSMA PET. And select patients, uh, clinicians should offer androgen deprivation in combination with docetaxel and either abiraterone or darolutamide. And this is from recent data showing that triple therapy in uh, de novo metastatic hormone sensitive disease is more efficacious, and this is grade A data. Nonetheless, patients should continue androgen deprivation and have uh, pathway-directed therapy, uh, as well as primary radiotherapy can be offered in low volume disease, and that's based on uh, data uh, from Stampede. As far as non-metastatic castration-resistant disease, Again, this should be based on serial PSA measurements showing rising PSA in the presence of a castrate testosterone. These patients can receive apalutamide, darolutamide, or enzalutamide. Uh, you can do uh, observation for those with lower risk of developing metastatic disease, and uh, particularly those with PSA doubling times greater than 10 months. For patients with metastatic castration resistant disease, patients again should assess. Uh, the burden of disease with either conventional or PSMA PET imaging at every six to 12 months. And these patients can receive a multitude of different therapies, uh, including uh, docetaxel. If they have received docetaxel before, they can receive cabazitaxel. In the presence of certain uh, genetic mutations, which we'll discuss later, they can receive PARP inhibitors. For those with low volume asymptomatic disease, they may receive Cipulus LT. And those with higher volume disease or uh, deleterious or germline tumors can receive platinum-based chemotherapy. Cl clinicians should also consider offering lutetium uh, in patients with progressive metastatic castration-resistant disease who've either had docetaxel and androgen pathway inhibitor with a positive PSMA PET. And this also is grade A level uh, information. Now, the rationale for the urologists in treating these patients, many of the patients who have diagnosed with prostate cancer have encountered a urologist at some point on the continuum of disease, whether they had biopsy, uh, surgery, or even just in follow-up. Additionally, urologists are familiar with the potential complications of treatment for prostate cancer and have seen these patients. Many patients will express a desire for continuity of care, even if there's disease progression, and therefore, the urologist should be able to uh, manage these patients along the entire continuum of disease. 
Urologists who take care of these patients should have a strong familiarity with clinical guidelines and advances in therapy. Additionally, if they work with advanced practice uh, practitioners uh, or uh, medical oncology partners, they can be a resource for these uh, individuals. APPs should, again, have a strong expertise in clinical guidelines uh, and will gain expertise through experience. Uh, and they can be a valuable communicator uh, to MD partners, particularly if they're practicing at a different site. Additionally, urologists should have access to specialty pharmacy. Uh, they can assist not only with uh, medication, drug-drug interactions, but they can also communicate with funders and company-specific programs to aid with lowering costs. Now, cost is an important consideration with these patients. They will be on hormone therapy and at least one or two other agents for the rest of their lives, and this can incur a significant cost. And it is incumbent upon us as uh, physicians and practitioners to try and help mitigate costs. And this figure from our colleagues here at Vanderbilt, looking at urologic drug costs, uh, they show a significant reduction in the cost of medication if they use the Mark Cuban uh, drug cost benefit uh, that is available online. And here, circle to the right, you can see a tremendous uh, decrease in the cost of abiraterone, one of the drugs that we use in uh, metastatic disease. Uh, the blue part is, is what the out-of-pocket cost uh, for Medicare, and you can barely see a green sliver of the reduction of cost using uh, this method. So what therapies should urologists provide? Certainly injectable or oral ADT. Uh, the second line of oral therapies, again, are quite manageable. Uh, and that includes enzalutamide, abiraterone, darolutamide, and apalutamide. Uh, we should be able to provide uh, counseling and treatment with Cipulus LT. Uh, some urologists are providing PARP inhibitors and docetaxel. Uh, in our clinic at Vanderbilt, we do relegate that to our medical oncologists. And also, don't forget surgical castration. This is also a cost-effective uh, management uh, of androgen deprivation. Uh, your internal team should include an uh, APP as well as a lead RN, as we mentioned before, especially pharmacy. You do want to have access to your tumor, multidisciplinary tumor board so you can discuss complex cases with medical oncology, radiation, pathology. You need to have industry partners, uh, not only for trying to reduce drug costs, but also to uh, participate in clinical trials. And then you need to have access to an apheresis or an infusion unit, particularly if you're providing Cipulus LT to your patients. The successful multidisciplinary team includes medical oncology and radiation oncology, uh, nuclear medicine, especially pharmacy, medical genetics, as we know the NCC and guidelines uh, do uh, uh, recommend genetic testing for high risk disease and beyond. Uh, an apheresis location, and also partner with your palliative care and hospice teams. Many of these patients are elderly and have competing comorbidity, and so we want to be providing the best care, uh, particularly towards the end of life. Just to briefly go over some of the data of the drugs that we use, you'll get much more in depth on uh, future talks within this conference. Uh, here's data from the IMPACT trial showing uh, overall survival benefit of men receiving Cipulus LT and castrate resistant disease. Uh, in particular, the benefit was seen mostly in patients with lower PSA, less than 22. Uh, now, this particular study was not power to detect a difference, but it does appear that earlier treatment has the greatest survival benefit. And in African-American men, the lower PSA actually has even greater benefit compared to white men as you can see, for PSA less than 26.8, uh, there's a significant difference in, in improvement in survival in Black men compared to white men with Cipulus LT. Here's data from the Cooper trial showing a 25% reduction in risk of death with abiraterone in metastatic prostate cancer uh, prior to chemotherapy. Uh, the PREVAIL trial showing uh, significant improvement, 29% reduction in risk of death in enzalutamide with uh, metastatic prostate cancer prior to chemotherapy. In metastatic castration uh, sensitive prostate cancer, uh, the two trials recently published, Titan and Aerosins, again showing approximately 33% uh, reduction in the risk of death uh, for apalutamide and darolutamide. 
Radium-223 should also be offered in patients uh, with uh, symptomatic bony metastasis without visceral disease. Uh, this acts by complexing with hydro hydroxyapatite within osteoblastic lesions. Uh, the Alsimca trial uh, showed a 30% reduction in the risk of death of those who receive radium uh, versus uh, placebo. And then even more recently, the VISION trial uh, showed that uh, lutetium uh, treatment, Plavicto, for metastatic castration resistant disease uh, showed a 38% reduction in risk of death and a four month survival benefit compared to standard care alone and MCRPC. We mentioned previously germline testing uh, should be performed in men with metastatic prostate cancer, germline or somatic testing. The genes of interest are, are listed here. Uh, in particular, uh, gene defects in uh, BRCA1, BRCA2, and ATM are responsive to PARP inhibitors. 30% uh, of men with MCRPC do harbor deleterious uh, DNA damage repair gene mutations, and PARP inhibitors uh, are, uh, may be effective in uh, men with MCRPC and these DDR mutations. Uh, the NCCN has updated their guidelines, and olaparib and rucaparib are approved in men uh, with DNA damage repair mutations. Uh, following androgen receptor directed therapy and or taxane based chemotherapy. So this is uh, now part of the standard of care. So in summary, patients with advanced prostate cancer have several options for treatment uh, that are relatively well tolerated, though optimal sequence has not been uh, determined. A successful multidisciplinary clinic can be led by a urologist and does provide the best opportunity for patients to achieve, uh, achieve a balance in management. And again, don't forget clinical trials is very important for our patients with these advanced diseases to uh, be exposed to the cutting edge of care. Thank you very much.